Good afternoon, General Counsel. Joining you midway through the first full day of our General Council meeting, today continues the Festival of Faith as well as plenary sessions for General Council. I'm joined this afternoon by Dan Hayward, who is the chair of the Theology Interchurch Interfaith Committee for the United Church of Canada. Now, Dan, this week there will be a motion before the court to accept a move into full communion with the Disciples of Christ. Is that correct? That's right. We hope to have that uh, in the next uh, day or so. And so can you start off by just telling me a bit about what full communion means? So a full communion agreement between two churches has a number of uh, aspects. There's a common confession of Christ, that we have a faith that is shared. Uh, there is a mutual recognition of each other's members and each other's ordered ministers. So under a full communion agreement, the ordained and diaconal ministers of the United Church of Canada would be able to work in Disciples of Christ congregations and vice versa. There is a common commitment to mission and a common celebration of the Lord's Supper, of Holy Communion. So this isn't the first full communion agreement that the United Church has. There, there are others with other partner denominations. There is uh, one that we passed at the previous General Council, the 42nd in Cornerbrook, Newfoundland and Labrador, uh, for full communion with the United Church of Christ which in the United States, which in, in turn a full communion partner of the Christian Church, Disciples of Christ in the United States and Canada. We also have mutual recognition of ministry agreements mm -hmm. with the Presbyterian Church in the Republic of Korea and the United Church of Christ in the Philippines. So with the full communion agreements, uh, the one that we already have with the United Church of Christ and that we will... Uh, be voting on with the Disciples of Christ later this week. What's the process to get there for Theology Interchurch Interfaith to make a recommendation to the Court of General Counsel? So the, this actually was a shorter process than our, the one with the United Church of Christ, we had never done one before. Yeah. So now that we have that one under our belt, uh, and they are also already in full communion with the Disciples, the Disciples and the United Church of Canada actually had talks in the 1970s about some kind of uh, possible union or agreement between the two denominations. Uh, those ended in the, uh, uh, at the start of the 80s. Mm. Uh, so there was already a history there. And the United Church uh, uh, has the difference in these talks and that the Disciples of Christ are actually a binational church. Mm. They are the Christian Church Disciples of Christ in the United States and Canada. So they have about 60 Canadian congregations, including two that are shared between the United Church of Canada and the Disciples in Winnipeg and Calgary. Mm -hmm. So we have, they are already in, they've been in Canada as uh, uh, almost as long as uh, our predecessor denominations, yeah. and we already work with them closely in at least two of Canada's urban centres. Mm -hmm. And what else can you tell us about the Disciples of Christ? Similarities, differences to the United Church of Canada? Well, they're just a little bit larger than we are. Uh, they have about 3,000 congregations, uh, 400,000 members. Um, they are a Protestant church, just uh, as we are. They are, have their origins in the American frontier in the early 19th century, which was the period of activity in Canada that uh, uh, led to the denominations being established here, which became the United Church of Canada. As I said, they are binational with a strong Canadian presence. They are a very justice-oriented, uh, very committed to the work of peace and to Christian unity. Mm -hmm. uh, they have always been a strong ecumenical church working with other denominations, uh, and uh, that is, one, is part of their ethos, is, the, is Christian unity, mm -hmm. realizing the prayer of Jesus that they may all be one. And what does this mean for the United Church of Canada? What will we gain by entering into full communion with the Disciples of Christ? With two full communion agreements, we will have two strong partners in North America. Uh, we will have a strong shared mission focus. We already share many of the same mission partners outside North America. Uh, the General Secretary, Nora Sanders, visited Colombia, which is one of the few countries where we don't have mission partners in common with her counterparts from the United Church of Christ and the Disciples of Christ and help to forge new partnerships there. They have a strong expertise in church planting, hmm. uh, which we could use yeah. and benefit from. 
they are uh, a particular ministry with uh, migrant churches, which we are also uh, trying to uh, have that uh, ministry as well, uh, particularly among uh, francophone, uh, uh, francophone immigrants from Haiti and uh, French-speaking Africa. Uh, these are all uh, areas where we can work together and, uh, and in the broader issues of uh, peace and justice and Christian witness. A exciting move as we continue to deepen partnership and relationship. Um, so thank you so much, Dan, for chatting with me today. And thank you especially for all of the work that you do on behalf of the church as chair of Theology Interchurch Interfaith and in so many other capacities. Thank you so much. Well, we're looking forward to celebrating when the motion passes. We'll, we'll look forward to that indeed. Thanks so much, everyone. We'll continue to come to you with more news as the day goes on. Have a great afternoon.